What is up? What is up? What is up? Welcome to the Mitch Davis show. It is Wednesday night, January 5th, the time of recording at nine o'clock Central Standard Time and 10 p.m. Eastern. You know what that means, folks. I am joined by my good friend, Brent Beard, college football analyst for First Coast News, Heisman Trophy voter, co-host of an SEC on Helping podcast with Trevor Rand. Brent Beard, how are you doing today? Well, I'm doing well. It's nice to be on with you. Uh, again, I know we're getting into hoops, but we still got a big game to go and uh, SEC kind of a mixed bag uh, right now, Mitch, and as far as bowl games were concerned, but man, the uh, coaches, players going back and forth. Uh, it is, uh, it, it take it really takes something right now to keep up with all of it. Before we get into the national championship, and obviously that's the main reason why we're talking on the podcast tonight, but I want to ask you about the Citrus Bowl in particular. Kentucky came back, they beat Iowa, and it was actually the most watched college football game other than a New Year's Six Bowl uh, there was in the country. Talk about that win for Kentucky, and what do you expect out of Mark Soups and the Wildcats heading into the 2022 offseason? I know some people will – um, poo-poo their season, saying they uh, they didn't really beat anybody. Uh, but look, I, I I take a lot of issue with that. It was a it was a tremendous tremendous season uh, for Kentucky. The way that they played, incredibly impressed uh, with them. Um, I mean. Uh, Chris Rodriguez, 100 yards rushing, uh, um, uh, but then the the guys who normally play well for Kentucky, uh, they did. Um, so that, that that was to me what was impressive. This is the this is a stat to me that summarizes what Mark Stoops has done, and, and Kentucky has won 10 games only four times in its 106-year history. Mark Stoops owns half of those. That, that is absolutely amazing. Ten win seasons from um, 1915, <laughs> it's going back a bit, to 2017, they had two. From 2018 to 21, they had two. And they both were under Mark Stoops. Uh, and look, I can see that was an exciting game. I mean, it really was uh, going down to the end uh, and being able to hold Iowa off, get got a big pick at the end of the game. Uh, Wondell Robinson really played well. Will Levis played well. So, uh, look, I'm a, I'm a Stoops and Kentucky fan, Mitch. I, I was – um, I, that that team is, uh, to me, going in a great direction right now. You know, another team that's going in a great direction, in my perspective, is the South Carolina Game to, Gamecocks. Shane Beamer, Coach Beamer, has resurrected this program and resurrected the excitement levels around South Carolina football. Talk about what you think about South Carolina football and their win in the Dukes Mayo Bowl over North Carolina, 38-21. Well, I, I thought it was a great win for them. Um, look, anytime you can meet a rival like that, it says a lot about your program. And, and, and here's another couple things for them. Their senior edge defender, Jordan um, uh, Strahan, uh, is likely coming back um, instead of going to the NFL. I mean, he only had 23 tackles and three sacks. Uh, so he probably needed to had a day two preseason draft grades and he made a good decision. And the expectation is that senior wide receiver, Josh Van will end up coming back for, for another year led South, South Carolina in receiving with 43 catches, 679 yards. I mean, Spencer Rattler coming in um, will certainly help them and establish settled down that quarterback situation. Um, they blew out um, uh, Auburn and also LSU. So 
uh, I, I mean, frankly, uh, um, it, 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 it pro you, you can argue, Mitch, that it for them, it probably went about as well uh, in, in, the, in the first year for them as it probably could be, uh, even in the midst of all the, uh, uh, the upheaval that they had uh, at, at quarterback, uh, and so forth. So, um, I mean, seven to six uh, was uh, quite impressive, uh, to say the least. Uh, so, uh, I'm uh, look. I, I was. Uh, I said LSU. I meant Florida. Uh, they beat Florida and Auburn uh, handily, and that, that that made a huge difference in their season. When you look at a team like Arkansas, and obviously we're not going to go down every bowl. We're going to wait till the bowl. The, the season recap in a couple of weeks, but looking at a team like Arkansas, they show dominance over Penn State. Do you see the Razorbacks going into this 2022 offseason and season, kind of like Ole Miss did last season with a chip on their shoulder, get to a New Year's Six Bowl, and really elevate Sam Pittman in this Razorback uh, program? I think they've done as good a job as anybody – uh, uh, it beginning to be in the upper echelon of the league, uh, frankly. Uh, 15 months ago, Arkansas was on a 20 game losing streak in the SEC. They won the Outback Bowl to finish nine and four with one of the toughest schedules, frankly, in college football. Big win over Penn State. And, and look, Penn State really was playing well. And looked like that Arkansas may lose that game, but Arkansas just took that game over uh, in the second half uh, and uh, just played, uh, I, I think, extremely well. K.J. Jefferson only threw 19 times, completed 14. <clears throat> they ran for 361 yards. I don't care who you are. When you can run like that, uh, that that makes a huge difference, uh, to say the least. Uh, the nine wins, the first time since Bobby Petrino's 2011 team uh, that uh, that you had that kind of a season uh, with that. So, look, all, uh, all in all, uh, just tremendous job that Sam Pittman has done, yes. Jumping over to the national championship, obviously, we've got an all-SEC national championship. I don't know if that doesn't make you excited. I don't know what will. You're not a true Southerner if you're not excited about this <laughs> all-SEC national championship. What is it, the second time in four years, five years? And I think it's the third time in the last seven, eight years? Yeah. Maybe you can correct me. Well, well the, the two, 2011, yeah. you had Alabama and LSU – uh, and then obviously you had <clears throat> two of throwing to Devonta Smith in Atlanta just a few years ago. Uh, and then now you've got Alabama and Georgia. So, um, and, and look, I'm, I am a very big proponent of expanding the playoffs, but even with that done, um, I still think when you get down to it, you're going to have uh, Alabama and Georgia uh, that are going to be in the final four on a regular basis regardless. When you look at this matchup, let's just start with the Georgia Bulldogs side. What do you expect out of the Bulldogs, and how are they going to combat this Alabama team who has come out of the ashes almost and look like Alabama of old? Well, um, I think Georgia uh, – I mean, the credit I give them was uh, Michigan – defensive ends Aiden Hutchinson and David Ajabo had zero sacks. I mean, Ajabo didn't even have a tackle. Uh, Michigan had uh, was averaging 37 points a game, held with three points until garbage time. Uh, I think what's fascinating to me is the Georgia running backs, eight catches for 141 yards, James Cook, three for 99. Stetson Bennett's a guy now, Mitch. I'm just telling you, he's 13 and three. Um, he was 16 or 21 for 234 in the first half, uh, through to nine different receivers, which was impressive. And, and look, the reason Alabama and Georgia are where they are, they're the only two teams in America to have had 
top six recruiting classes the past five years. So uh, uh, that that is uh, humongous in a game like that. Uh, and um, I frankly think since a minute, we'll, we'll, unless he gets hurt, we'll probably play the whole game, uh, frankly. But, uh, I mean, George has got to be able to get some pressure on Bryce Young to make him uncomfortable. They, they've still got weaknesses in the secondary. And they've got the psychological advantages. So, from the Georgia stand, standpoint, that's what I'm looking at. On the Alabama side of things, obviously Nick Saban is going to have his team ready. I mean, if you bet against Nick Saban, you're a crazy man. How do you see this thing playing out for Alabama? And what do they have to do right and do the same way in the SEC championship? Obviously, Kirby's going to make some adjustments. But what do you expect to see Alabama in the second go-around on Monday night? Well, uh, they're hitting their stride, and they are playing significantly better. Uh, I, I don't think there's any doubt about that. Um, the, the greatest stat that we may ever see is Bama uh, in 11 seasons. This is the 10th time that they finished December with one loss or less. We will – we will likely never see that again. I mean, that's a John Wooden run. Um, Brian Robinson's gotten healthy at 204 yards versus Cincinnati. And on defense, Will Anderson has been unblockable. Uh, nearly 100 tackles, 34 tackles for loss, 17 sacks. Um, and But they've gotten better with the younger players. Uh, they have gotten uh, uh, to... Uh, uh, Dallas Turner's playing better. Uh, Phil Mathis on the defensive line is is a big improvement, uh, too. So, um, uh, they since the second half of the Auburn game, they have found themselves. And I'm not sure the uh, close wins they had over Florida, uh, LSU, Auburn, uh, I was at the Tennessee game, saw him there. I was at the Florida game, saw him there. Um, that this is this is a significantly better football team uh, than they were. And, and Mitch, let me drop this on you too. Bama is in the na- I want you to get this. Bama's in the national championship game. Uh, one went away from another from back to back national championships. And they are going to be better next year. <laughs> yeah, the thing about it is, all you can do is laugh. If you're not an Alabama fan, and I, I told somebody this the other day, we were walking around New Orleans, we were talking about Alabama. Alabama, they don't just reload. They completely restock the cupboard. Yeah, and yeah. when their guys are seniors, they've got freshmen and sophomores and juniors that have been in the program for already two to three years and getting that experience. Is that Alabama dynasty, even when Nick Saban is going to be gone, whether that be 10 years from now, five years from now, six years from whatever it is, will that Alabama dynasty still continue under the right head coach? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It will. Because whoever, okay, let's just pretend a minute. They hire Dabo which is, I think, who is who I think gets first call. Um, Dabble will have Nick Saban's recruits for what? Uh, that, that will carry him over yeah. for easily two or three more years. So, and look, that that is why um, they'll, they may deny it. That's why Les Miles won a national championship in 07 is because he had Nick Saban's players. So, um, yeah, I don't think there's any doubt about that. It's, it, it, it's the greatest run we've ever seen. And he is 70. And, I, you know, if his health continues to be good, and I think it will, I think he coaches minimum another, another five years. One more question I have about Nick Saban, and then I'll get to your predictions for the game. I want to just 
you've been around football a lot longer than I have. Obviously, I've been around 25 years, and I, I love college football. But talk about the lasting impact that Nick Saban will not only have on Alabama, but college football. We see his assistant coaches everywhere from Marshall to Georgia to A&M, and the coaching tree goes on. What is that Nick Saban lasting legacy going to be on college football? Well, uh, it, it's going to be many layered. Uh, in Alabama, he really has revitalized the city is what he's done. I mean, they, the, the city of Tuscaloosa um, has grown incredibly uh, since uh, he has been there. The, the school enrollment has increased incredibly since he has been there. Um, the legacy of national championships, the, um, uh, the guys in the NFL, uh, the coaching tree, um, those are the things that uh, are, are so impressive in what he leads. And, um, I, and look, he has looked upon, frankly, and I don't agree that with everything he says, but he's really looked upon as the um, unofficial czar of college football. Uh, I mean, when they want a uh, um, when they want a, a, a serious question answered, I, I think they've got uh, that's who they go to. Uh, so he is, um, and I grew up in the state of Alabama during the time of Paul Bear Bryant, and we we never thought that coach Bryant would ever be replaced and, and look, and, and it's not really probably fair to compare them because of coach Bryant's, um, uh, it was in a different era, uh, in, in a lot of ways, but I'll say this, if they'd had a playoff during the time coach Bryant was there, um, uh, he probably would have won two or three more national championships himself. So, um, it, 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 listen, um, Nick, Nick Saban's legacy, Mitch, will, will, will be talking about Saban in, in almost hushed tones and what he did um, 20, 30, 40 years from now. Wow. Last question I have for you. How do you see the national championship game being played out, and what are your predictions for the game? I go back and forth with this a little bit. I, I thought Georgia would win um, in the SEC championship game, um, and they'll play better. But, look, the, the two things in Alabama's favor more than anything else uh, would be uh, Saban is a significantly better coach than Kirby is. Now, look, that doesn't mean Kirby may not be there one day, but that, that's just the way it is. And Alabama has the significantly better quarterback. And, and But, I mean, with that said, I mean, I, I still really like Stetson Bennett. I think he's done some tremendous things. Um, so I, I think he'll be much closer this time. Uh, but I think as this Alabama team has evolved – and, and grown over the last few weeks. Um, I, I think they are the point where um, they, they've had this experience that will help them. And I don't, I don't quite have a handle yet on the score, uh, but I, I, do think, I do think they'll win a close game. He is Brent Beard. Brent, tell them where they can find all of your amazing work and tell them where they can follow you on Twitter. Uh, at Brent Beard, B-E-A-I-R-D, uh, and they can find me uh, um, also on Second Helping with Travis Ryer. Um, uh, you can find us just about anywhere. It's, it's a SEC podcast is what it is. Um, also, Heisman Trophy voter, uh, First Coast News in Jacksonville, um, you can get that on uh, YouTube. So uh, we're pretty easy to find, but uh, love 
college football. Sad to see it coming to an end, but it was incredibly important to have gotten this season in as much as we have. Hey, thank you so much for coming on the Mitch Davis show. It's always an honor to talk with you and enjoy that game on Monday night. I know we're going to be talking another couple of weeks or so to put a bow on this season. Mitch, look forward to it. Thanks for the opportunity.